with that, and hopefully that, that provides a good baseline for how the tool works, I'm going to pass it over to Richard, who's going to go a little bit deeper into a, a, a different demo. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much, Rob. Uh, I think I'm sharing my screen now, so I'm going to um, start with a final demo. A uh, little, little uh, different type of use cases uh, on my demo. Um, this is a public sector use case around incident analysis. And we actually built out uh, a, a series of demos for our most recent uh, customer, which is the Chicago Police Department. So they're actually using Indeca to uh, hunt down bad guys, look for suspicious activity uh, across uh, a wide variety of different and diverse data types, such as um, crime incidents in their incident database, uh, police officers' notes that they make uh, when they make an arrest, uh, social media, people talking about witnessing uh, the incidents, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this demo today is, um, is designed to show you just how I navigate and search through uh, all of the crime incidents that have happened in Chicago uh, since 2001. So I'll start. So what you can see here, if you look at the screen, just like Rob showed you, instead of people being indexed, uh, this time we're actually indexing all of the uh, crime incidents that happened in Chicago over the last 12 years. And this is actually a publicly available uh, data set. Uh, so any of you can go download this from uh, the City of Chicago uh, website. Uh, what we also did, though, is attached uh, to those crime incidents the police officer's raw notes. So when uh, they actually are recording or making an arrest or recording an incident, they have the ability to input freeform notes uh, into the database to, to just further supplement the structured attributes in the, uh, in the incident database. And you can see some of that data here that we actually pulled out using text enrichment in my tag cloud. So you can see here, I have a high number of incidents that uh, are related to crimes of $300 and under, uh, domestic, simple, uh, domestic battery simple, forcible entry. So these are interesting terms that the system has automatically pulled out of those notes. But I thought I'd actually do a demo uh, and look for something interesting to show the Chicago police. And this is a real use case that I showed them. Uh, I had about half an hour before the demo to uh, find something interesting in this data set, having never seen this data before having no idea what's in it. So this is a real insight that I discovered about 30 minutes before I, I had to demo to them. And there, as a result, they actually spun up an investigation based on uh, the insight that I found. So I wanted to uh, just start exploring the data. So what I noticed is I got about 4.8 million incidents. Uh, about 30% of those incidents actually lead to an arrest. So only about one third of my incidents actually lead to uh, the officer arresting the suspect or individual. And that's about 1.4 uh, million uh, arrests over the last 12 years. And there's a ton of other ways that we can summarize the data as well. Uh, you can see here um, that I have a breakdown of all my incidents by block in Chicago. So you can see here that uh, uh, 100 or so West O'Hare Street has about 13,000 incidents. Uh, recorded against it over the last 10 years. And I can go on and I can start to drill down in my data by uh, incident type, such as theft or battery, just like Rob showed you in the demo before. Um, I can look at other summaries of the incidents. So this is a breakdown of incidents by ward, uh, or a pie chart to show me the percentage of arrests versus non-arrests. Or I can come down to the bottom of my screen here and look at all of the individual incidents themselves and all of that de uh, detail around the individual incident. Uh, so we haven't aggregated or lost any of that data or pre-summarized with. We're indexing the full 4.8 million incidents here, and every click is re-summarizing and re-querying those 4.8 million uh, incidents in memory, uh, so that, and, and, and we're still able to achieve completely interactive uh, speed and response time uh, in sub-seconds. So here's an example of one individual incident. So I thought I would look at everything related to uh, drugs or narcotics-related incidents in Chicago over the last 12 years uh, and just see, see what the system tells me. So I can, just like Rob showed you, I can hit the search box. I really had no idea how many ways narcotics or drugs is represented in the system. 
as I start to type into the search box, it searches across all of my structured and unstructured attributes to show me that narcotics appears in a number of different places. So I don't want to manually go through and select each one of those individual narcotics related labels. I want all of them. I just want to say to the system, get me everything related to narcotics. So I can do that by just simply uh, typing in the full word narcotics here and just hitting the go button in search. So this is more like a, what you're used to seeing in, in uh, Google. So I'm now looking at everything uh, related to uh, narcotics um, over the last 12 years. And something really jumped out at me when I did this search is that I now have a 99.38% arrest rate. So compared to only 30% of the incidents lead to arrests across my entire data set, when I'm looking at narcotics related incidents with a free form search on the word narcotics, that's a massive difference between my, uh, my uh, original data set of just 30% leading to arrests. So I want to drill down and investigate that in more detail. But you might also notice that all of my incident descriptions have re-summarized to be relevant to only things related to narcotics. So uh, these different descriptions are now very, uh, very much uh, centered around narcotics. And you can see just my example of my block there. I had O'Hare uh, as being my number one block uh, for all crimes. Well, now you can see that East Browning Street uh, is the most uh, heavily uh, uh, fre frequently occurring block in narcotics related incidents. So let's look at some more recent data, um, for example. So if I come over to my uh, trends tab here, I can actually see how narcotics related incidents are increasing or decreasing over, uh, over the years. Uh, so it looks like in general they're actually on the way down. I have a little breakdown as to whether they're occurring within the day or the night here, AM versus PM. Uh, but I only really want to look at recent data. So I'm just going to look at data for 2012. So I can click on the chart just like I did in guided navigation or just like I did by selecting something from my search box and select it right here. And now I'm just down to 11,000 incidents that are related to anything to do with drugs or narcotics in the year 2012. And you can see that the pattern still remains. I still have an incredibly high arrest rate for narcotics related incidents in 2012. So what I thought would be interesting is let's look at all of the incidents that didn't lead to an arrest and try and figure out why they didn't lead to an arrest. So just like um, I selected something in guided nav, I'm now going to look at my pie chart and hover over the words uh, arrest equals false and click on that. So now I'm actually just looking at uh, 124 suspicious incidents because they didn't lead to an arrest, whereas I would normally expect to see, um, uh, 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 or they did lead to an arrest. Sorry, these didn't lead to an arrest, but I would definitely expect to see that for most of the narcotics related incidents. So my next question here is, well, where are these, where is this suspicious activity occurring in Chicago? So again, I can pivot over to my map page here and just like Rob showed you uh, on, the, on the consultant data, each one of our incidents uh, is geotagged. So the officers actually uh, record the exact location of the incident uh, when they enter it into the system. And this jumped out at me. I actually have a cluster of pins around a specific location here where this suspicious activity is occurring. So rather than search a ra uh, from a specific radius, I'm actually just going to put a little lasso around these individual pins and let go and now I'm filtered down and I'm looking at just the incidents within that specific radius. And I can keep zooming down if I want to uh, look at those incidents in more detail. But if I come back up to the top here, you can see how I'm adding and layering on levels onto my query. So I'm now down to just 60 of my suspicious incidents uh, that have occurred in 2012 related to narcotics that did not lead to an arrest. The next thing that jumped out at me are these two wards. So a ward is the way that the city of Chicago uh, splits up all of its uh, ge geographic locations. And I can see that ward number 24 and number 28 
uh, are actually related to almost over 50% of this suspicious activity. So I want to select both of those and look at why that's occurring. So if I open up my ward dimension here, you can see that NDEC has sorted these from highest to lowest. I have 23 incidents in ward 24. I'm going to select that and 16 incidents in ward 28. I'm going to select that and submit those to the system. And again, now I'm down at 39 incidents and I'm getting a narrowing in on my suspicious activity. The next thing I realized that you see my, my chart here is automatically drilled down for me. So the next level inside wards that the police officers refer to are the individual officers beat. And quite clearly here I can see that this beat number 1134 again is where most of my suspicious activity is occurring. So I can uh, click on that and now I'm down to out of 4.8 million 12 incidents that I want to go and investigate. And what I thought to round this off would be interesting is let's look at the type of location that these incidents are occurring in. So I can uh, flip my axes here and actually look at my location description and when I do that I notice that this suspicious activity is actually occurring in a police facility vehicle parking lot. So that is very interesting to the Chicago police. Why are they not arresting people for narcotics related uh, crime in a, in a particular police facility vehicle parking lot. So they actually put a couple of officers onto that and they went and investigated that in more detail. But hopefully you can see there how quickly and easily I got to that interesting insight knowing nothing about this data set in advance. And just to finish this off, uh, the police particularly like this capability, which is straight out of the e-commerce playbook, which is where Indeca got a lot of its heritage. So I'm looking at my individual incidents here, these 12 incidents that are suspicious, and I want to look at what's common and what's different about them. Maybe I've got suspects with the same features or different features, of, uh, such as their weight or height or distinguishing markings on them, and I want to see if they're suspicious uh, suspects that occur within uh, these 12 incidents. So I can select all of these and in my action button here I can say compare these records. And when I compare these records it stacks them up side by side and for any of these I can block the record. So here I'm going to just arbitrarily select this first incident and I can say highlight what is similar or what is different about these other incidents uh, that, that compared to the incidents I've selected. So really, really powerful capabilities for police to track down bad guys, to look for specific attributes about suspicious activity, and then widen their search out and look across all of Chicago for uh, similar suspects or similar activity. So with that, that's all I have for you uh, on this particular demo, and I'll hand uh, back to the uh, presenter, and we'll take some questions, questions and answers.